Okay. I'm probably going to name this part two of remembering the CB radio. With me, I know everything's about me, right? But anyway, with me, when I started on the CB radio, I lived on Avenue J and East 46th Street. And I used to hang out with, um, well, really nobody at back then because I was too young. I was only about like uh, eight, nine years old when I was on the CB. It all started from a little walkie-talkie I had. I got a walkie-talkie for Christmas. And when I put it on, all I heard was all of these big power stations. You know, one of them walkie-talkies back in the days where you heard everything and everybody talking and nobody heard you. Well, I used to get on. I used to try to call people, call people. Until one day, there was this loud voice over my, over my walkie-talkie. And I said, let me try to get that person. And I kept on going, hello, Blue Eagle, Blue Eagle. And then he kept, he said to me, yeah, who's calling me? I go, Blue Eagle, Blue Eagle, because I didn't think he was talking to me. And then he goes, yeah, this is Blue Eagle, who's this? I go, this is Lester. So then he goes, Lester who? I almost dropped dead. I went running around the house. Somebody hears me. Somebody hears me. Look, look. I'm running around my house. I'm going, what's your name? He goes, Mike, what's yours? I said, I told you, Lester. He goes, oh, I thought that was your handle. I didn't know what the hell a handle was back then. Oh, all right. So that's how Lester stuck with me. Every uh, 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 This poor guy had a big CB radio. He was right across the street from me on, on East 46 between I and J. So every time when I would hear him on, Hey, Mike, Blue Eagle, how are you? Okay, Lester, how are you? Oh, I'm okay. Lester, stand by. I'm talking to people. Okay. I would stand by two seconds later. Mike. <laughs> and he goes, Lester, st forget it. I drove this poor kid crazy. Well, guy, kid. Every two seconds. Because I was so happy. I finally got to talk to somebody with this stupid thing. And then uh, what happened was um, Mike started breaking chops with car services. There was a car service on uh, Avenue N, uh, Avenue M in Utica called Milltown. And they used to be on 22A. And Mike used to splash them because he had a linear. So these car service cars would be coming by tracking him down. So I would get on when I heard their voices really loud. You know, I would hear, like, the bass say, car 22, make a pickup, car 5, make a pickup. And I used to go, car 4, where are you, or something like that. And then he would say, I'm in front of that guy's house. And I was shocked because uh, another person used to hear me. Anyway, that's how I got the fever for CB. I told my parents, you got to get me a CB. So next Christmas, they got me one. No, for my birthday, they got me one. Anyway, I used to have a friend named Stephen Volks. And uh, he used to live on East 46th Street. Before he moved on 46th Street, he used to be at um, East 53rd. Uh, between I and uh, between I and J in those uh, apartment buildings over there. Anyway, he moved to across the street from me, and we started hanging out, and we were talking. 
I said, watch, watch, this thing really works. And I was breaking Paul Mike's chops again. So then I lent it to him, I lent it to Steven, and he bought one. So now me and him were talking, and all the, we were talking to each other, and talking to poor Mike. <laughs> Needless to say, it drove Mike crazy. But anyway, I ended up getting um, a mobile station and connecting it to a power supply. And I got the roof antenna, which I had uh, outside my window back then. And that was some fun times. That's when my life got ruined. <laughs> you would get on the CB radio and say, oh, I'm only going to be on for five, ten minutes. And then you get on and you start talking and you start listening. And when you want to go shut it off, you say, oh, no, let me leave it on. I want to see what they're saying. See if they're talking about me or see who they're talking about. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, those uh, few minutes ended up being hours, and those hours ended up being all night. Then all night, <laughs> or led into the morning, and then the whole new crew came on in the morning, and then you would want to stay up and talk to them. Oh my God, it was addictive. Okay, I'll make another posting depending on um, how much feedback I get from these two. If you just want me to keep on talking about old times, I will. Okay? For now, signing off. Boy, oh boy, this is like being on CB again. <laughs> I'm entering another world. <laughs> Except one without a lot of mongoloids. And maybe one day... Who knows? I know a lot of you have moved away. A lot of uh, the CB has passed away. But who knows? Maybe one day we could all get together and have like an old class reunion, family reunion, or in the CB terms, mongoloid reunion, or just a big break. Okay. Take care. If I get some good feedback on this, I definitely will post more. And by the way, Steve, Miguel and Gorilla, <laughs> if you watch this, give an email. Give us a shout. And anybody else, uh, you can do that too. And Brandy, I know you're listening to this. And you're probably peeing in your pants. But last night when I was talking to you, it wasn't Brandy that I was thinking about. My mind wasn't clear. It was Bacardi. She used to hang out with Frankie Stubbs who used to be with another kid named Mike Mechanic, and who used to hang out with another crackhead-looking kid named Lee, who uh, lived over there at a park on East 24th and Bedford Avenue. Okay, just to clear that up. <laughs> All right, take care. This is it. I'm shutting the hell up. I know I'm tired of you people. Bye.